So recently, I found out that I have the same birthday as Ethan Klein, and my partner has the same birthday as Trisha Paytas. And now I'm just supposed to carry on like everything's okay. That non sequitur was with purpose. I am sweating. Uh, because today I am going to be talking about Taylor Swift. I don't think that a Swifty would ever cause me physical harm. I mean, really, I think the only people in danger of death by Swifties are maybe like Jake Gyllenhaal and the single person in a windowless room who seems to be running Ticketmaster. But I'm also painfully aware that if I get a single fact wrong, a much more educated Swifty will just decimate me in the most poetic way possible. And they'll probably win album of the year while they're at it. But really, this video isn't even about Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is just a catalyst for a wild story I came across of conspiracy theories, doxing, and more. <laughs> All, of course, on the hell site known as tumblr.com. So a few notes before we get into today. First and foremost, there is already a great write-up on the hobby drama subreddit by The Ordinary Era, and I'll be linking that in the description as well. Next, we have a content warning for all of these things. And I know you may be thinking, that's a lot. And yes, yes it is. This video is also for sure going to be a long boy, so I have timestamped everything with chapters so you can feel free to skip around, or you know, leave it running with the ads on and then Come back at your leisure. And finally, before we get into everything, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, which I have been waiting for this day. I got my partner Dan a HelloFresh subscription for Christmas last year and again this year because it was much needed in our household. See, we both like to cook. We like the concept of cooking, but we're terrible at putting together a grocery list, setting aside the time to actually cook, and actually thinking of recipes that we want to eat on a regular basis and HelloFresh just takes all of that stress out and just gives us tons of options which have all now accumulated on our fridge. Like look at these. HelloFresh also has lots of different options for people who eat just about everything like Dan or people who try to eat more vegetarian vegan like myself. And even on days where I don't feel like cooking, HelloFresh now has the Fast and Fresh line which offers a range of really awesome meals that can be whipped up in just 15 minutes like the Falafel Power Bowls or the Southwest Pork and Bean Burritos. And it not only saves you time, it saves you money, another thing I, I quite personally like. In fact, HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. And especially at this time of year when you really don't want to trek outside for the grocery store, HelloFresh also has HelloFresh Market where you can stock up on snacks, sides, desserts, and you can just add those to your weekly order and they'll show up with your regular weekly box. So if you too would like to skip the grocery store and have delicious meals sent to you every week, you can use my code. You can use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use P-O-G Ashley Jan 21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it. All right, let's talk about lesbians and Taylor Swift. The nice thing about making a video about Taylor Swift is I don't really feel like I have to explain who she is. Like, you know, international pop star, famed Cats composer and actress. I mean, Taylor was the second person I saw in concert, first was the Cheetah Girls. And that was just when she was a small, underground, multi-award winning artist on her Fearless tour. To this day, one of my biggest regrets is donating the shirt I got on that tour, because I now see people selling that thing for hundreds on Depop. Depop Swifties are like a different kind of ruthless. And although I've always enjoyed Taylor Swift, I've never been particularly immersed in like the Swifty fan culture. I guess I was too busy lusting after the Disney Peter Pan actor. But since Taylor Swift is by just about any metric, one of the most successful and beloved musical artists out there today, her fan base, the Swifties, are made up of a wide array of people who of course all have different relationships to Taylor's music and her image generally. Within Swifties, there is a subset of fans who, it seems to me at least, have grown quite a bit over the last couple of years, at least in visibility, known as the Gaylers. And you know, much like the Swifty community and the queer community, Gaylers also come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and opinions. However, broadly speaking, as the name would imply, Gaylers are a subset of Taylor Swift fans who believe that Taylor Swift is somewhere on the queer spectrum and expresses that identity in either subtle or not so subtle ways. And I've used that broad definition intentionally because of course within Gaylers there is a wide array of conflicting opinions, but I did my best to put them in three very arbitrary levels, which I will explain to you now. Level one Gaylers. Level one Gaylers are fans that believe Taylor Swift mostly falls in the straight category, but maybe she has some sort of unrequited or unexplored feelings for women. You know, it's a common experience for queer folk to have a really intense 
platonic relationship with somebody that ends in a really dramatic breakup and you only really become aware that that was a queer experience years later when you just go, huh. And some of Taylor's more public friendships with women seem to at least visually follow that pattern. Really, level one gaylers are by far the smallest subset of gaylers. Uh, they have really only scratched the surface of the gayler lore. Maybe they have some questions about Diana Agron or Carly Kloss, but they probably haven't seen this picture of Taylor and Emily. Level two gaylers. Level two gaylers think that Taylor is bi, pan, or otherwise queer. Basically, they believe that Taylor has dated several women, and this includes people like Emily Poe, Zoe Kravitz, Diana Agron, and of course, Carly Kloss. We'll get a little bit more into who Carly Kloss is later, but for now, just know if someone identifies as a gayler, it is pretty likely that they believe that Taylor either had romantic feelings or actually dated Carly Kloss. But level two gaylers, importantly, stop short of saying that Taylor Swift is a lesbian. They still usually believe that her public relationships with men, like her current relationship with Joe Alwyn, are in fact real. I say most because many Swifties do not believe that Taylor Swift actually dated Tom Hiddleston. And in fact, conspiracy theories around Tom Hiddleston and Taylor Swift's relationship are often a significant pathway into the level three gaylers. So level three gaylers believe that Taylor Swift is a lesbian. And although it's possible for lesbians to have dated men, but maybe realize they were a lesbian after that, for the most part, level three gaylers seem to think that Taylor has been gay this entire time, has always known this, and all of her public relationships with men are what's called beards. So bearding or beards is when someone either consciously or unconsciously date someone to conceal their sexual orientation. Usually this is to give the appearance of a straight person being in a straight relationship. Another related term to understand is the phrase lavender relationship or lavender marriage, which historically was used to refer to relationships between gay men and lesbian women where they would get married and present as a straight couple, but with the understanding that these two were queer and they would be free to explore their queerness outside of that relationship. This way they would be protected on some level and still able to pursue their own identities safely. But now that we all have a, a very surface level understanding of Gaylers, let's talk about the friendship of Carly Kloss and Taylor Swift, because this friendship, or, or not friendship, really is the glue that ties the Gaylor community together. Carly Kloss is an American supermodel and former bestie of Taylor Swift. I know her as a Victoria's Secret angel because she was one really during the peak of the Victoria's Secret hype, but she was only a Victoria's Secret angel for three years and she was plenty famous before that time. How Taylor and Carly met and when they met is another topic that is hotly debated in the Gaylor community, so I'm just going off of what the public consensus seems to be. Taylor first mentioned Carly in a 2012 interview for Vogue magazine. The story goes that she's in the Vogue office and sees a signed picture of Carly Kloss and goes, OMG, I love Carly Kloss, I wanna bake cookies with her. When that article comes out, Carly tweets back, hey, your place or mine. But officially, they didn't actually meet until the 2013 Victoria's Secret fashion show, where they were, of course, both performing. And it just seems like they were instant besties, or again, something more, depending on your beliefs. <laughs> In 2014, they took a spontaneous trip to Big Sur. They were spotted together in public constantly, holding hands. You'll often hear Gaylor's reference Kissgate, which is a video of Carly and Taylor at a 1975 concert, which forensic experts are still in a heated debate as to whether Taylor and Carly are kissing in this video or what is going on here. I don't know. Clap if you think they were trying to speak oh, to hear each other. So clap if you think they were kissing. In fact, it was such a heated debate that Taylor briefly tweeted, then deleted a post asking people to stop shipping her with their friends because that's weird. But why listen to Taylor when we can enhance the image, boost the contrast, the truth will be revealed. I mean, that part aside, it really is hard to overstate just how often these two were seen together or referencing each other. And the rumors with Kissgate certainly didn't come from nowhere. But in 2018, things started to take a turn. On January 1st, Carly posted a pretty innocuous post on Instagram, but she initially captioned the photo Swish Swish, which was widely believed to be Katy Perry's response song to Taylor Swift's song, Bad Blood. Taylor Swift may have had a gang of hot women, but uh, Katy Perry had Backpack Kid and one of Nicki's best verses. So um, hard to say who won that round. This was all part of Katie and Taylor's uh, public feud that lasted for several years. And I don't care how many times people explain this feud to me, I still don't get why either of them were mad. I feel like I'm missing something here, but that's for another day. But anyways, Carly got so much backlash from Swifties over this Instagram caption that she ended up changing it. But then 
just a month later, Carly is seen having dinner with Katy Perry, which again, makes everyone freak out because at that time, Katy Perry was public enemy number one. I mean, more like public enemy number three. Uh, I feel like Kanye and John Mayer have always alternated in that spot. Someone Taylor did not like. And a few days later, when asked what secret she would like to know, Jennifer Lawrence said this. I mean, honestly, I'd like to know what's going on between Carly Kloss and Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the honest to God truth. I know, I already know this. Is nobody I else just like know. curious? It's keeping me it's up like... at night. <laughs> what happened? Honestly, y'all, why did we turn our backs on her? She's just like us. Even though Taylor and Carly went from being spotted all the time, all the time together to really never being seen together. In March of 2018, Carly said to not believe everything you read and that the two of them were still super close. And then in August of 2018, Carly makes a surprise appearance at Taylor's reputation tour in Nashville and posts what I believe is the last picture taken of these two together. And despite Carly continuing to claim that the two are still really close friends and that there's no drama. Now, I just gotta get this out of the way because the world deserves to know, but is everything cool with you and Taylor? The world needs to know. Well, Jen, Jennifer Lawrence was interested. Uh, Jen, don't worry. Taylor and I are still really good friends. Well, that's good to hear. Taylor is never seen with Carly again and doesn't come to Carly's wedding, but Katy Perry and Scooter Braun, the guy who bought Taylor's masters, does attend Carly's wedding. In fact, when Scooter announced that he had bought Taylor's masters, he was on vacation with Carly Kloss. And this is a man who Taylor publicly stated was a manipulative bully. So it would seem, at least to me, that some stuff went down that we as the public will, will probably never know. And from a Gaylor perspective, the relationship between these two is just such a rich text that leaves plenty of room for speculation, even though, as I mentioned, Taylor pretty directly asked people not to speculate in that way. Now, I want to be very clear that the idea that Taylor Swift is secretly queer on some level might sound crazy because let's be real, heterosexuality is very much viewed as the cultural default. But this theory doesn't come from nowhere. And this video is not an attempt to refute the Gaylor theory or to minimize it. I mean, Gaylors have dedicated years of their lives, hours long videos, lengthy Prezi presentations, complex master docs, all compiling evidence that support the Gaylor theory. And some of the evidence for the Gaylor theory, I would say are in incredible reach incredible reach. What's your favorite face to do in a photo shoot? Obviously, my blue steel. She knows. She knows. But other pieces of evidence, especially when all put together, you know, it's not unconvincing. And it's also worth mentioning just right out the gate that a large portion of the Gaylor community are queer themselves. And knowing that queer people get crumbs for representation and that it's human nature to see parts of ourselves in the things that we love. I mean, what queer person wouldn't want their favorite artist, one of the biggest artists of our time, to be queer? Genuinely, I think if Taylor were to come out, it would make some people rethink things, especially when the only representation queer people get these days is that purple monster cop. The other reason why the Gaylor theory is as pervasive as it is, at least I think, is the relationship that Taylor cultivates with her fans. I mean, since day one, Taylor has been known for implementing Easter eggs in her music. For example, in her physical CDs for Fearless and Red, Taylor would capitalize certain letters in the lyrics in the booklets that would spell out a hidden message which dedicated fans could put together. For example, for her song Fearless, Taylor capitalized the spelling I cried while, re while recording this. Or for her song 22, she spelled out Ashley, Diana, Claire, and Selena, which was a reference to her four best friends at the time and were likely the inspiration for the song. So she was never like giving out the nuclear codes in these little riddles, but it inspired her fan base to look deeper into her lyrics so they might see a fun fact about the song they might not have known otherwise. And with Reputation and Lover, she really began vamping up these Easter eggs. She heavily implemented visual references to her other work. She would hint for upcoming releases and of course more hidden symbolism. In the background of the You Need to Calm Down music video, there's a shot where you can see Lover, which of course ended up being the name of the album. And to be clear, the vast majority of these hidden messages Taylor puts in her music Music are not subtle. Like in her recent anti-hero music video, you can see her playing the guitar she toured with for Speak Now. And then in the Bejeweled music video, the camera slowly zooms in on her dramatically pushing the three button. And it just happens to be the color widely associated with the Speak Now album, her third album. Combined with the fact that we all know that she's re-recording and re 
releasing some of her older works signals to the audience that Speak Now will probably be her next re-record. It's something casual Taylor Swift fans might not notice, but dedicated fans who know that she likes to put in these sort of hidden messages are definitely going to spot it because it's not that hard to piece together once you have that context. But because Taylor enjoys putting hidden messages in her work and is known for, you know, dropping surprise albums or hinting at a collab months in advance. There are times when Swifties have found hidden messages when they're just straight up were not hidden messages. One of the uh, more recent and great examples of this was the Woodvale incident. After Taylor released two albums totally by surprise, Folklore and Evermore, fans noticed something odd in the released album art for Folklore. Just visible in the corner, you can see the word Woodvale. And because the Folklore album had several songs about a love triangle, many theorized that Woodvale was the third album in this Love Triangle trilogy. And it turns out, no, no, someone just forgot to edit Woodvale out of the corner. It's kind of hard to see. I tend to be sort of, um, sort of annoyingly secret agenty about um, dropping clues and hints and Easter eggs. And it's, it's very annoying, um, but it's fun for fans and it's fun for me because they like to pick up on things. Um, and they'll notice lots of things in music videos or photos or whatever. And then sometimes um, I take it too far and I make a mistake. Taylor being the mastermind that she is, before she had the name for folklore, she would refer to it in code and that code name was Woodvale. And so when her team was developing the art for folklore, they put Woodvale in as a placeholder just so that she could see how the text would look above the image. And because that text kind of blends into that corner, they just forgot to take it out and chaos ensued. Another time Taylor pretty directly teased this conspiratorial mindset was the time she released this series of photos on Instagram. It started with seven palm trees in the background. And then the next day she was sitting on the sixth step of the stairs. And then she posted a photo in front of a fence with five holes in the background. And then the next day, she doesn't post anything. She then posted a picture of her cat, shocked by the theories that had spun out of all these pictures, and then posted another picture with the fence with the caption, now there's five holes in the fence. The whole thing was either a very wild coincidence or a deeply nuanced in-joke with her community. Either way, Taylor Swift and her fans are well aware of that the things that Taylor Swift says and does are not going to be taken at face value and they're going to be looked at from every possible angle. And the popularity of the Gaylor theory is really just a diverging path from this very consistent pattern with Taylor. What if Taylor is revealing details about her personal life and her sexual orientation the same way she revealed details about her next album? When everything Taylor Swift says is meant to have a hidden meaning and a literal one, something that may seem like a coincidence can be viewed as very solid proof, especially when you're confirming a belief you may already have about Taylor. But of course, theorizing about whether Taylor is gearing up to release an album on her birthday and theorizing about Taylor Swift's sexual orientation are not one-to-one. -one. The stakes of that are very different and dedicating a vast amount of time and energy to speculating about something as personal as someone's sexual orientation can end up causing a wide array of problems. But I will spare you the video essay listicle of why this mind frame in the context of the Gaylor theory can be problematic because there is a blog that has managed to demonstrate every conceivable issue that can arise from taking this theory to its most extreme. And that blog is Tay Tay's Beard on the one, the only, tumblr.com. Tay Tay's Beard is a now deleted blog that was created in 2014, but lives on in infamy within the Tumblr community, the Swifty community, and even the Gaylor community. Tay Tay's Beard, or TTB, for many years was considered the leading Gaylor blogger. And the tagline for her Tumblr was actually quoted on this article on Gaylor culture. As long as Swift engages in stage relationships for publicity and sales, her tactics are fair game and open to scrutiny. As you might guess from her name, TTB is a level three gayler who believes that Taylor Swift is a closeted lesbian who has had several secret queer relationships. But most importantly, TTB believes that Carly Kloss, Taylor Swift's public bestie for several years, is legally and currently married to Taylor Swift. They've secretly been together since 2014. To pull this off, all of Taylor's past boyfriend and her current partner, Joe Alwyn, or Toe, as he is lovingly referred to by TTB, are contracted beards who use Taylor's fame to promote their careers, while Taylor uses them to cover for her own secret relationship with Carly Kloss. We do not know the identity of TTB, however, we do know that she is a straight, 
married woman, and she has said that she is a little bit older than Taylor Swift herself, so somewhere in her mid-30s. And during the golden era of Taylor and Carly's relationship, TTB would frequently post, you know, the standard shipping blog content. Photos and videos of them together, fan edits, speculation about their relationship. But TTB also claimed to have insider sources who would provide her with details about Taylor and Carly's relationship. And although no one ever knew who these insider sources were, a lot of people believed them because they would confirm a lot of the beliefs that were popular in the Gaylor theory, especially at that time. And so TTB and her sources gained a lot of credibility in this community. But as we know, during 2018, the relationship between Taylor and Carly entered rocky territory and the two were being seen together less and less. Because these two were being seen together less and less, TTB was quickly running out of new material to post about their relationship she so firmly believed in. And to make things even worse, Carly got engaged to Josh Kushner, who was not Taylor, not a man, and the in-law of the Trump family. And of course, the Trump and Kushner family are at total political odds with Taylor and most of Taylor's fan base. Now, Carly had been dating Josh before she even met Taylor. They had been dating since 2012. And although Josh was always factored into TTB's theory of their relationship, it was much easier to discount this boyfriend that Carly never mentions than to discount this marriage to a man who, again, especially after 2016, we were a lot more aware of his family, their political associations, and what they stood for. I cannot see Carly wearing it anywhere, honestly. Like, I not even to dinner with the Kushners. <gasps> oh, no, Tyler, don't say that out loud. Holy. But rather than reckon with this sort of oxymoronic relationship, TTB deepened her resolve to prove that Taylor and Carly were still together. And actually this engagement was all part of their master plan. Josh would dramatically and publicly break off their engagement so that Carly could run right back into Taylor's arms and they could publicly come out as a couple together. And all you sheeple who thought Carly and Josh were actually going to get married have fallen right into their trap. But TTB needed something more, something to lend credibility to this theory. Someone on the inside. TTB would often post anonymous questions that had been submitted to her Tumblr. Even though these used the ask function on Tumblr, a lot of them really just functioned like pinned comments. Someone would post their Gaylor theory and TTB would either respond underneath saying she agrees or disagrees, or sometimes she would just post them with no comment at all. And in August of 2018, a mysterious insider appeared. Who is this mysterious insider? Well, we don't know for sure. We only ever knew them as Spade. Spade's first insider tip to TTB was big. Even though Carly and Taylor had not been spotted together and were believed by some to either be ex-friends or ex-girlfriends by this point, Carly would make a surprise appearance at Taylor's Nashville stop of her reputation tour. And just when all hope for Taylor's was lost, Spade was right. As we know, this picture confirmed that Carly did indeed make a surprise appearance at the concert. So wow, this really does make you think, maybe Spade actually is an insider working closely with Taylor and Carly. But as I've delved deeper, I've begun to realize that even from this first Spade tip, there are some red flags. I'm not sure how Tumblr works currently, but at least when these posts were circulating, a person could submit an anonymous ask to a blogger, and although the blogger post would be timestamped with the day the blogger responds to that question, there's not really a way to know when that anonymous person submitted that tip or of course who it is because it's anonymous. And so there's no way to know if that anonymous tip was sitting in her inbox for weeks or if she had just gotten it the day that she posted it. So the concert where Carly appeared happened on August 26th. And according to TTB, she was told several days before the concert that Carly would be making a surprise appearance, which, you know, of course, huge. But TTB only reveals this days after the concert by saying, hey, remember how I said I had spicy insider tea but couldn't reveal it? Here's what it was. And the thing to know is TTB would always say, ooh, I got some juicy insider information. And you know, if nothing happened, she would just hope that everybody forgot about that. In all likelihood, TTB probably got really lucky 
and retcon this post to make it appear as though she knew all along that Carly would be making this appearance. Because this ends up being huge for TTB and Spade's credibility. Anytime someone questions the authenticity of Spade, of Kaler, or of TTB and her sources, she would always refer back to that time that she was right about Carly appearing in Nashville. And if that's true, everything else TTB says must be true. The Nashville spotting is also one of the rare instances in which Spade supposedly gave very specific unambiguous tips about Kaler. Most of the Spade messages were incredibly esoteric strings of words and numbers, which are technically riddles, although saying they're riddles implies that they could be solved without more information. They were really only riddles that could be solved once TTB had another piece of evidence that conveniently fit her narrative. Let's read some together, shall we? Also, I hope y'all can see this super sweet artist. Honey, she may. She sent me stickers for my laptop, not the I voted sticker, she didn't design that one. And I'm also linking her shop in the description because she's really lovely and she has super cute stuff. Anyways, Let's get into it. I can't reveal all the keys to my riddles. My lips are locked down. Lockdown is not properly spelled here, but the spelling is an anagram for no wedlock. The fact that this riddle was sent to us on the 18th day of January and Carly got fake married on the 18th of October makes this pretty convincing. No wedlock means there was no actual marriage. It was just a photo shoot. Reflect, 42, refract. Rainbows are the result of refraction and reflection of light. They're gay, get it? Oh, words, how they can lead you astray or ask you to stay. This was sent while our fandom was upset about Taylor's choice of words in the August 8th Vogue interview. I didn't realize until recently that I could advocate for a community that I'm not a part of. This one's my favorite. Fuck, 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 fuck. The day prior to this riddle, it was announced that Scooter bought her masters. While Spade has not confirmed that we solved this one, we are pretty confident that we got this right. One of my other favorite things that Spade tended to do is um, sometimes when no one was picking up on what she was trying to say, or let's be real, the tip made no sense, Spade would just come back and solve the riddles for you. Like this one, seven, three. I've never done this before, but here is insight into my previous messages. The seven for how many days until the post, and the three for the time. CST at the post. Yes, like many things, this was planned. Precision, perfection, and passion are why this Sagittarius succeeds. Carly Kloss posted her Instagram story wishing Taylor Swift a happy birthday at 3.45. PM, I use CST because our command post headquarters are in Nashville. It's like a serial killer returning to the scene of the crime. She just can't help herself sometimes. Now, y'all might want to sit down for this. Are we rested? Are we good? Okay. Most people are pretty sure that Spade is just TTB using an anonymous figure to artificially inflate her credibility. I know, not something I can definitively prove. That's just a theory. A gayler theory. Another blog that was started to keep track of Spade's riddles was Spade Riddles. And to my knowledge, it's never been confirmed that Spade Riddles is also TTB, but this is pretty universally accepted by the blogs in this community because Spade Riddles and TTB share the exact same very specific beliefs about Taylor and Carly's relationship, which only gets more complex as time goes on. Put a pin in that. But also we're pretty sure that Spade Riddles and TTB are the same person because Spade Riddles is incredibly complimentary of and deferential TTB. Spade Riddles writes about TTB the way 14 year old me would describe the protagonist in my fan fiction, who is just a self insert cooler version of myself. All right, but returning to the timeline of Carly, Taylor and Josh, the wedding of Carly and Josh was set for October of 2018 and Spade, Spade's Riddles, and TTB would continue to deny that the wedding would happen, and as October moved closer with no real updates from Taylor and Carly, TTB became increasingly desperate uh, to poke holes in the theory that Josh and Carly were in a relationship and planning their lives together. First of all, like Joe Alwyn, Josh Kushner had to also be a beard for TTB's theory to work. But Josh Kushner isn't just any beard, he's also gay too, and actually secretly dating his childhood best friend Mikey. And Mikey also gets married to a woman, but don't worry guys, that wedding is fake too. And this actually works for Kaler on two fronts. The reason Taylor and Carly can't come out publicly is because Carly is stuck in this contract where she has to keep up appearances 
that her and Josh Kushner are in this happy relationship. She can't just walk away dating a woman, the scandal. But also, this way Josh isn't a threat to the Kayla relationship because he isn't interested in women anyways. So then why does Josh need to be in this lavender marriage? Well, for one, he's from a super famous conservative family. Something else I didn't actually point out while I was filming is that Josh's cousin, another Kushner, actually got married to a man in 2012 in an orthodox ceremony. And I also realized that while I'm talking about the Kushner family as like an umbrella term, when I'm talking about the Kushner family and really when Tay-Tay's beard is talking about the Kushner family, it's mostly referring to Jared Kushner and their father because those are really the people that are associated with the sort of right-wing politics and the ones that people probably have the most to say about. You know, a lot of the Kushner family, while they're wealthy and have some degree of like a public name recognition. Most of them seem to be pretty private people. You know, it's a big family. I'm sure lots of them are decent people and they don't all hold the views of Jared and their dad's view. So just wanted to put that out there. His super powerful family also does business with the Saudis. And if he came out, this would look bad for his super Republican family and not to mention all of their Saudi associates who would be mad because they also hate gay people. But TTB's insider source has confirmed that everyone in New York knows that Josh and Mikey are gay and together, of course. And fortunately for TTB, it's very hard to directly disprove her because New York marriage licenses are actually pretty difficult to obtain. From the research I did, it seems you either have to be a listed party on the document, so one of the married people, or be otherwise legally authorized to access that document. So that means that TTB can say that Taylor and Carly are secretly married in New York, Josh and Mikey are secretly married in New York, and of course, Carly and Josh are not legally married in New York. You can't verify it and neither can she. So we all know that means it must be true. One of the other things TTB latched onto leading up to and after Carly and Josh's wedding was their religious backgrounds. Josh Kushner is Jewish. And when his brother Jared Kushner and his sister-in-law Ivanka Trump got married, Ivanka converted to Judaism. And I am not Jewish myself, but this is just my understanding. Unlike other religions like Christianity, where the tenet is sort of to spread the word and convert as many people as possible, the Jewish religion really doesn't seek to evangelize. And it's a very lengthy and difficult process to officially join the Jewish faith. And again, it's also my understanding that if you give the appearances that you're just trying to convert to please your spouse and it's not something you also firmly believe in, they won't let you just go through the process and say that you're Jewish on paper. It has to be something personal to you. And I mean, you can imagine that rethinking your faith and immersing yourself in a culture and a religion that you maybe didn't grow up in is not a decision that you would take lightly. And it's probably not a decision you would make if you were just in a fake relationship. So knowing that, TTB took every opportunity to pick apart Carly's religious conversion and just outright deny that Carly was now a practicing Jewish woman. When Josh and Carly were married, TTB made several posts nitpicking how their wedding broke with Orthodox Jewish tradition. And she also claimed that Carly never directly stated that she converted to the Jewish faith, despite the fact that Carly essentially did say that. And there are plenty of public reports describing the process she went through to become Jewish. In fact, one time Carly was asked whether she had converted and Carly said, yes, I've joined the tribe. Dina, Susan wants to know if you converted to Judaism when you got married. I joined the tribe, Mazel. Nice, you're a nice Jewish girl. And because this was not her literally saying word for word, I converted to the Jewish faith, TTB did not take that as confirmation. But real Jewish people told her that the Jewish faith does not talk about conversion the way Christianity does, for example. And actually saying, I joined the tribe is the appropriate phrase you would use if you were in the Jewish faith. But TTB ignored the input of Jewish people who informed her about this because it did not fit her narrative and that's no fun. TTB also began referring to Josh as a crook and a rat, which have a long and complicated history of attachments with anti-Semitism. But again, despite actual Jewish people pointing out the history of anti-Semitism attached to words like rat and crook, TTB refused to change her ways and said, rat is actually a phrase used by the mafia. So it's actually fine. I mean, I can't think of a less problematic group than the mafia. Now, those are just a few examples of some of the anti-Semitic behavior that TTB exhibited. And I'll warn you that it will continue as we go through this video. And quite honestly, between things that TTB would 
post and delete, allegedly, and some of the discourse that Tumblr bloggers have had since Tay Tay's beard was deleted. Uh, I've left a lot of more concerning things out that I didn't necessarily have direct proof of as well. But in what I would say is a related concern to what TTV had about Josh being Jewish uh, was TTV's very strong interest in the Kushner family and the Mueller investigations that were happening in 2018 and 2019 surrounding the Trump presidency. She was notably pretty vocal about her hopes that the Mueller investigations would result in the arrests and indictments of Josh, his brother, and their father. And this is why most times when she's referring to Josh Kushner, she will lovingly call him Jail Kushner. Isn't that sweet? TTB would also often refer to the Kushners as the puppet master controlling all of the bad things that Trump is doing, which, again, suggesting that a wealthy Jewish family is behind all of the perceived wrongs in our country is not new rhetoric, and it's not great rhetoric either. But on a lighter note, TTB did confirm that, of course, Trump also knows about Taylor and Carly's relationship, which, can you imagine? Honestly, I've never seen TTB and Trump in the same room. Once Carly and Josh were initially married in October of 2018, they were set to have a larger wedding with more friends and family in May of 2019. And this is the wedding where we saw Scooter Braun and Katy Perry attend. But again, according to TTB's insider sources, this second ceremony, of course, would not happen because Carly and Josh's marriage contract or bearding contract was set to expire in May of 2019. Don't ask how we know this information. Uh, Spade, Spade is the answer. <laughs> Spade confirmed that in the next couple of months, we would see Carly and Taylor together again, and that Carly would be single and significantly rekindle her friendship with Taylor in a very public way. And as a bonus, if the Mueller investigation resulted in the arrest of Josh, well then that contract gets ripped away even earlier, which is all the better for us. Now, I wanna make this very, very clear. From my understanding, Josh Kushner was never the direct subject of the Mueller investigation. You know, I'm sure he was looked into because he is a close relative of these people, but primarily the focus of these investigations were Jared Kushner, who was a senior advisor to Trump, and by some extension, their father. And again, to my knowledge, there has never been any sort of criminal accusations thrown out against Josh Kushner, although TTB did perpetuate this theory that he was involved in the death of an American journalist, again, supposedly to deal with his relationship with the Saudis, famously. So yeah, pretty clear at this point, TTB is not a big fan of jail Josh Kushner. I mentioned before, TTB would frequently post ask submissions that she had received from other bloggers and would either give her own commentary or just post it as is. And sometimes these were spade or insider sources, but a lot of these people were just fellow Kaler truthers because TTB was not the only person who believed in this conspiracy theory or still believes in this conspiracy theory. And because TTB was such a central figure in this community, they would use her blog to sort of voice their opinions. And one day, Tay Tay's Beard receives an ask submission, which I don't have the original version of, but I do have a line that was posted in it, which get ready for some homophobia, y'all. It's, it's happening. <laughs> Someone lovingly said that they were wishing jerks, that was also another nickname for Josh, jerks tiny a-hole good luck if he goes to jail. And TTB wasn't the one who said this horrific thing, uh, but she certainly did defend it for far too long when she, of course, received criticism for publishing this horrific comment. She said that she doesn't condone SA jokes. It was just a prison joke. Which, yeah, guys, calm down. I, I know you think that she platformed a horrific comment about a minority group, but it's actually a joke about a different minority group. The person who actually posted that comment did actually come back and apologize for saying what they said. And TTB said, I already deleted it. Thanks for owning up to it. As if she wasn't the reason all of these people had even seen this comment to begin with. I mean, posting this submission in the first place was once again, just really emblematic of her straight up awful worldview. Despite TTB wanting Carly and Taylor in her mind, a gay couple to come out and be celebrated by the world. TTB was more than willing to platform jokes about Josh Kushner, who in her eyes was a gay man as a bottom, feminine, a criminal, and just overall less than. It's honestly so wild to watch someone swing so hard for queer representation that they pivot right back to homophobic stereotypes about gay men. And this criticism, again, was not left unsaid. Tumblr users did reach out to TTB and try to explain why posting asks referring to Josh as a bottom was 
homophobic, and it went about as well as you would expect. For example, there's this exchange between another Gaylor blogger and TTB. Anytime you publish asks referring to Josh as a bottom or the ship name Bottomly is pretty offensive to me and others who made me aware of that. It insinuates that MLM receiving partners are somehow less than, and TBH commenting on Josh's personal relationships like that, or any gay man's, is just not a good look. Josh is terrible, but has nothing to do with his sexuality or his potential status as a bottom. Like I said, I'm not here for drama. I want to see the best in everyone. I do not think, or I really hope, that you don't mean to be offensive, which is why I haven't publicly commented on that. I would rather discuss with you first. I was not behind that at all. Maybe two total ever made it onto my blog, and I deleted them. That was years ago. The bottom thing, I mean. It was just the nickname that people called them sometimes. It was a good ask, but it also included the nickname. I do agree that it is not appropriate. Sometimes I get so many asks that I skim things too quickly, but no one sends those anymore. I have not seen them in ages. I received half a dozen screenshots of you publishing asks as recent as 2019 referring to Josh as a bottom. I would advise you to delete those and maybe request that your followers don't put you in that position anymore. As a gay person, demeaning MLM relationships like that is very off-putting. Josh's politics are dreadful and I support dragging him, but his sexuality should not be brought into it like that. You have a huge platform with many young LGBT fans, I'm sure. I think some of us worry because of that. I'm sure you can understand. Tete's Beard says, I am not going to go through my blog and find these posts. And as I said, I have never called him one. If you don't like my blog, you don't have to follow it. The fact that someone is sending you screenshots of my blog is telling. Their agenda is to take me down. Sounds like a few people we all know on here. My track record speaks for itself. What I find incredible is how much I get attacked on her for saying I am straight. Unbelievable. Won't someone please think of the straights? And Swiftgron says, as a gay person, I'm telling you it would be worthwhile to remove those posts. They could be harmful to your audience. Surely you're not talking to a queer person in a queer space complaining about being attacked for being straight. I don't think you know what actual gender sexual minorities go through in terms of being attacked for their sexualities. You may want to rethink that line of thinking. That is not what I said. The irony of how I get attacked for my sexuality is the issue. And it is curious that your screenshot pal accuses me, but not the anons. Same, you are after me about it, but not the anons who submitted it. Find one reference to me ever calling anyone a bottom and we can talk. And you might want to think about not posting stuff like this on Kaler chats if you don't want confrontation. And I know that screenshot is small, but it's this blogger saying the white umbrella theory is stupid, which we will get to the white umbrella theory later. Personally, I applaud that blogger for their patience and trying to get through to her. And I don't think I can say anything that that blogger didn't already say. Now, I've pointed out before that TTB is no stranger to homophobic rhetoric, but she's not afraid to get specific. She's also more than willing to be biphobic as well. I will say that biphobia is something I've personally observed in Gaylor spaces. Of course, it's not every Gaylor either, but pretty much all of the evidence that supports the idea that Taylor is a lesbian or is gay also by extension would support the idea that she's bi, pan, or queer, whichever word you'd like to use. And as a queer person myself, I've heard from gay people and straight people this idea that bisexuality is just this mystical illusion that it's just like a warm-up until you pick a side. And from what I've seen, TTB would never voice these things specifically, but very much in line with her pattern, she had a habit of posting ask submissions that, again, perpetuated these stereotypes about bisexuality without giving any pushback, and in fact, kind of just endorsing them. So, again, couldn't find anything of her being directly biphobic but she certainly platformed it. One of the posts that received quite a lot of criticism was this one, where an anonymous user says, Taylor will likely come out as bi or no labels to protect her beards and to keep the shippers happy. A lot of celebs come out as bi when they are actually lesbian or gay. It's not new. That's how the industry works. Tay gets to date Carly in the public and keep part of her fandom happy. And TTV says that is a decent possibility. And I don't have the actual screenshots of this, but one blogger, Toasted Coconut Chips, apparently reached out because of the biphobic rhetoric in this post, and Tay Tay's beard responded by saying, allegedly, I am not biphobic, I just post asks. People are entitled to their opinions. Since you do not follow my blog, your post comes from ignorance. Learn from Taylor. Do not attack others. She has a great song about it. You need to calm down. Another post I found from her that does not get talked about uh, nearly as often as that particular post did was where someone again talks about Taylor 
being bi so she can play up the John Mayer angle, basically saying that she can't come out as gay because Dear John is one of her best songs. And TTB responds by saying, I totally get your point. But when I think of John Mayer, I think of a walking STD. I really am not sure he would be good for her image. But again, your point is quite valid and interesting. I don't think I need to remind Swifties that John Mayer sucks, but Taylor Swift is not the problem for acknowledging that she dated a man when she was 19. Moving on from that as best we can. From 2018 all the way up until 2020, we are just getting an onslaught of just glorious false either outing predictions, breakup predictions, of course, none of which end up coming true. And there are far too many for me to read out to you all. I just want you to know that this is all going on in the background of all of these horrific things being said as well. And you would think that the anti-Semitism homophobia, and just constant false predictions would signal the beginning of the end. And they certainly did play a role, but 2020 was just a clusterfuck of action-packed and problematic events for TTB, all leading to her downfall and all of which deserve their own recognition. First, we have the classic COVID pandemic slash umbrella gate. I know you might be thinking, how does a pandemic tie into Kaler drama? That's a thought at least I would have had in my more naive days before diving into the world of TTB. When COVID reached the United States, there was a lot of criticism being directed at Donald Trump and the government generally for their lackluster immediate response to the situation as it quickly escalated beyond really anybody's control. But what if I told you it wasn't the president's fault that the president had a shitty response to a lot of people dying from a deadly disease? No, what if it was actually Josh Kushner's fault even though he's not an advisor to Trump, but he is the brother of Jared Kushner, as TTB will never let us forget. And so by extension, it is also Carly's fault. Now, what I'm not about to do is defend Jared Kushner or Trump in any regard. I don't think that's necessary. And I will point out that it is odd that TTB so desperately wants Taylor to end up with Carly, but clearly also doesn't think highly of Carly. For example, on April 3rd, she posts, for those of you who have rightly chosen not to dig deep into the Trump Kushner administration failures, Jared is the number one reason that the US is in the worst shape in the world in dealing with the virus. He convinced Trump to ignore the virus for months. Now Jared will not give the state supplies they need. He is a monster. And the Kushners have dragged the Kloss name through the mud. The Kushners don't care about Carly, her dad, or her family. The joke's on Carly, but it seems to be going right over her head. She looks like the dumb blonde doting wife, just as the Kushners want her to be. If you follow this closely, Trump relies on Jared for everything. Trump is too stupid to do anything on his own. Of course, at the end of the day, the responsibility is all on Trump, but Jared has always been the most influential person to him. There are many reports stating that he followed Jared's advice that the virus would not affect us and to disregard it. And then this really wild one about Carly specifically. Do you think Carly is soiled beyond repair? Will you forgive her if you lose someone to the virus for the role she played in this? I know I won't. Think about the people in New York City. 3,000 deaths to date. All of the pain and suffering going on in her hometown city, the city that she proclaims to love. And yet she is busy whitewashing a criminal and his family's name on a daily basis. How will she honestly go out to lunch in the city months from now? Everyone there is being affected by this. I mean, let's not ignore the whitewashing. And that's not even addressing the fact that she said that Carly played a role in the death of 3,000 people because she is married to someone who is related to someone who works for the president. But anyways, since everyone was quarantining in this time, of course, if you were a Kaler truther, if you were TTB, you would of course believe that since Taylor and Carly are married, that they're quarantining together. Well, how do you prove that? The answer, umbrellas, what? During quarantine, Carly Kloss posted this picture on her story and it's a little difficult to make out, but you can sort of see the reflection of a white umbrella in the background, the yard that Carly took this picture in. And so TTB highlights this open white umbrella and the wall near it. Now, what if I told you that Taylor Swift also owns a white umbrella and a wall? 
checkmate atheist. Now, I don't want to lose y'all with the specifics on this one because the discourse around this is surprisingly much more in depth and heated than a lot of the other things I listed before. But people on Tumblr do draw sight lines of Taylor's backyard to try and match them with Carly's Instagram story. And long story short, it doesn't match up. And even if it did, it is just a white umbrella and a wall. And the funniest part of this, to me anyways, was that even the loyal TTB followers who like actively looked to her for insider information was like, that's it. <laughs> the Black Lives Matter movement. This is another moment in recent history, which I'm sure we all remember. In the summer of 2020, following the deaths of several Black Americans at the hands of police, there was a national discussion around racial injustice, police brutality, and much more. Taylor initially posted on her Instagram story three days after the death of George Floyd. She tweeted on May 29th, condemning Donald Trump and saying he upheld white supremacy. And on Blackout Tuesday, she posted a black square with 13 black hearts and a link to donations separately on her story. And then a week later on June 9th, she posted a link on Twitter to register to vote in an article written by Barack Obama, which was addressing the national conversation that was going on at this time. Now, I can't dedicate the time necessary to give the full context, but basically Taylor up until 2016 had a reputation for being politically silent. And with her documentary and the release of Lover, she sort of came out as a Democrat, uh, for lack of better words, and she promised to use her platform for social issues and apologized for being silent up until that point. And as we all know, of course, she's one of the biggest artists in our generation with a huge, diverse fan base. So her voice matters and carries a lot of weight. Some fans of color thought that particularly in light of her promise to be an advocate against injustices, found her response to be too late and pretty lackluster. And you know me, as a white lady, I don't get to give input on that criticism. And it's not my job as a white lady to tell fans of color they're being unfair or wrong because what the hell do I know? Well, you'll be shocked to learn that TTB does not share my view on this point and began privately DMing individual Tumblr blogs who were vocalizing this criticism of Taylor. And from what I saw, a lot of the criticism that was being voiced wasn't even particularly damning or cruel. It was pretty to the point. For example, there's this one, I'm tired of white fans and non-black fans telling black fans they can't be upset at their fave for not speaking up more about the Black Lives Matter movement. There's also this other post by Luna Darling where I can't see what Tay Tay's beard actually said because of course her blog got deleted, but it's again the same sort of discussion. They're going back where Tay Tay's beard says that Taylor Swift has like, done enough for the BLM movement and others are voicing their criticism back. And because TTB was deleted, it's very hard to see like the direction of this conversation and if other things were deleted, but there's also this exchange, which I believe leads up to this message. And from what I saw, TTB appears to be responding directly to this post by saying, you're calling me a racist for what? I'm not going to get in a public feud with you. And the only way to delete your comments is to block you. Your accusation is out of line. I don't agree at all with you or anyone else telling others how to protest. If you feel so negatively about Taylor, just leave her fandom. Don't support her. It is really simple. Adding toxicity to this issue is accomplishing nothing. Again, please understand that you are being blocked for one reason and one reason only. You attacked me with an awful insult unjustifiably. Thank you for understanding. The way I saw this screenshot of this DM, it appeared to be in response to that post I just showed you, but I'll acknowledge that there may have been some messages in between that got deleted, but it doesn't stop there. Their person said, for the record, TTB was in my DMs accusing me of bullying Taylor for calling out her inaction. And when I finally told her I was done arguing, she called me a keyboard warrior. In another DM, she said, Taylor did speak up on BLM. She is wise. She doesn't dilute her message. She has maximum impact by posting less frequently. She spoke up on George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery and she called out the most powerful man in the world for his racism. She's donated much than you have, I am sure. She has shared resources that her team surely vetted. I am sure she has done plenty more impactful things behind the scenes too. You really need to calm down. You are just another hater that she addressed and you need to calm down. Stop the hatred. Do something positive with your time. Six teenagers in Nashville created a protest of nearly 20,000 people on their own. You spend your time spreading ignorant negativity about others, and then you tag her to boot. Shame on you. Go do something about racism. She has. And she also posts stats about the reach of her post about Donald Trump. 
um, reached 2.2 million likes, which I will say, if Trump knows about her secret gay relationship with Carly, pretty brave of Taylor to call him out publicly. But TTB isn't even going that far. She's just calling her brave for adding Donald Trump on Twitter. Never mind the fact that Taylor Swift really doesn't need any of us to defend her honor. You can enjoy an artist and be critical of them. But tone policing people of color during such an awful time when they're addressing real concerns that they have, real feelings that they have. Again, I wish I had something more eloquent to say other than it's just fucking shitty. It just sucks. And I'm not sure if it gets worse from here. Um, this is pretty bad, but y'all, it doesn't get better. Carly Kloss's pregnancy. On October 29th of 2020, People Magazine announced that Carly and Josh were expecting their first child together. And despite earlier stating that People Magazine was a reliable source, TTB did not believe that Carly was pregnant, that it was a rumor either being thrown around to strengthen Carly and Josh's relationship or hinting at a future breakup somehow, or oddly to win votes for Trump in the upcoming election. I don't know. But this rumor kind of got confirmed when Carly herself in November posted a video with her baby bump, which at first Kaylers thought was just a little bloating um, after a delicious meal that Taylor had whipped up the night before. And concerningly, as the pregnancy continued, TTB posted several submissions suggesting Carly was going to fake a miscarriage as a lead up or a justification for divorce. Because again, the idea that Carly was in love with Josh, in a relationship with Josh, was just too much for any Kaler to comprehend. However, TTB did eventually come around to the baby being a real living thing. I mean, it's simple, really. The baby wasn't Josh's. It was a surrogate baby of Taylor and Carly's that they were now, for some reason, being forced to raise as a Kushner baby. What is her evidence for this? Well, once again, that spicy, anti-Semitism comes right back. One post that was reblogged by Spade Riddle suggested that the baby Carly showed in her video uh, could not possibly be a Kushner baby because it had a pinkish skin tone and strawberry blonde hair. And also we haven't forgotten that Carly is not a Jewish woman, so she would never name her child Levi. And so TTB thought about it a little bit more. Taylor Swift would never let her baby be associated with, in her words, an organized crime family or the surname Levi or the Kushners generally. So of course, there wasn't just one baby, there were two babies. <laughs> Levi was just a distraction for the normies. Carly and Taylor had had another secret baby, which had sometimes been seen out in public. And TTB actually realized that she had received the wheat emoji. From receiving the single wheat emoji, she was actually able to piece together when Carly's insemination date from her surrogate was from this emoji. So you see, Levi was a surrogate baby for Josh and Mikey to help Trump win the election. And when Carly and Taylor would come out to the world, Carly would leave Levi and Josh behind and raise her real baby with Taylor in the public eye. But wouldn't the public be super confused by that? Uh, and won't Taylor and Carly's child feel weird knowing that they have this like fake brother associated with them? Well, Levi will just disappear. After all, when's the last time we saw Sophie Turner with her baby? Apparently, Sophie Turner's baby isn't real either. We'll, we'll put that aside. I love the idea that Carly could supposedly just never mention her real human child again. Because I can imagine that even now, someone has had a question as to why Goose is not in the background of this video. He's fine, he's in the living room, or he was fake, you'll never know. I just love the idea that TTB thinks the public would be fine with someone faking a child publicly for over a year and then just B babies, so 2020, who knows? The rise of anti-TTB. I'm sure none of you will be too surprised that by this point, TTB was not exactly held in the highest regard in the Tumblr community. Um, she still had her small group of loyal followers, but really Swifties on Tumblr had pretty universal disdain for her. And this included Gaylor and Kaylor theorists who also believed that Taylor and Carly dated. And by this point in time, late 2020, multiple Tumblr bloggers have spoken about this publicly, some of which I've shown. Some of them are just goofing on how silly some of her theories are and some of the wacky posts that she 
would post. And others offer much more serious criticism. For example, one blogger, Kaler Antisemitism, was, as it sounds, specifically dedicated to addressing the anti-Semitic rhetoric that was rampant in the Kaler community leading up to the wedding of Carly and Josh. And of course, how can I forget the classic debunking Tay-Tay's beard was also created at this time, which, as the name suggests, would mainly debunk and poke fun at TTB and uh, TTB followers. Another Tumblr user who spoke out against TTB was a blogger named Femte. Femte was another Gaylor blogger who made a lengthy post describing both her own experience of bullying from TTB as well as, again, documenting TTB's long pattern of problematic behavior. And just when her reputation had never been worse, for those who don't get it, that's a, a Taylor Swift. When TTB's reputation was at an all-time low, she began sending emails to Tumblr blogs who had spoken out critically against her. Well, I say TTB sent these, but I actually mean allegedly TTB sent these because they were actually signed by a new shadowy anonymous figure, new shadowy anonymous figure unlocked, Taylor Doe. I mean, Agatha Christie, eat your heart out. I mean, she can't, she's dead, but I digress. And as goofy as these emails may seem, they were not without real consequences. On at least one of these emails, TTB CC'd a Tumblr blogger's boss on this email, which is accusing this blogger of cyberbullying TTB. In another now deleted post, a teenage Tumblr user described how she had also received one of these emails and at least one of her friends were CC'd on this email, describing this person's queer Taylor Swift blog. And according to this Tumblr user, they were not out at that time, but word got around of this email and they ended up losing a close friend because of it. And this teenager also said that the situation could have been much worse because they supposedly had a violent and homophobic father and was terrified that word of this email would eventually go out to him. This is an anonymous story, but needless to say, Tumblr Swifties were justifiably very upset at the optics of an adult straight woman outing a queer teenager. Allegedly, TTB and Spade Riddles denied that they ever bullied, doxxed, or threatened anyone. And there were some follow-up emails from this Taylor Doe account saying, among other things, that the people who posted screenshots of these emails were defaming TTB or that they were somehow infringing on TTB's copyright. That's not how the law works, but those emails were sent regardless. And no lawsuits ever actually happened, which for the people who received these emails, I'm glad because even though there weren't grounds for these lawsuits, even defending BS claims can be expensive and stressful. It's not something I would wish on anyone, but I will say the deposition of TTB probably would have been pretty epic. And before people could really even process these emails, just before the release of Evermore, Tay-Tay's beard mysteriously disappeared off tumblr.com. Shame love. It's a shame you never got to hear Evermore, love. You would have you would have loved Evermore. I'm just kidding. You think TTB is going down that easily? No, no way. Pretty shortly after, several blogs popped up, all claiming to be Tay-Tay's beard. Creatively, these were TTB2, TTB3, and TTB4. And of course, we still had the Spade Riddles account, which we're pretty sure is TTB as well. And I wasn't really able to verify this, but in the Reddit write-up by Ordinary Era, she said that TTB4 was actually a fan of Tay-Tay's beard, and she created this alternate account um, in the hopes that she could reach TTB and get her to change her anti-Semitic and awful ways if she would just listen to reason. But then TTB lashed out at TTB4 and um, the two ended up feuding. I could not find um, any archive really of TTB4, so I can't really verify this, but again, the story amuses me. And for that reason, I like to believe that it's true. Tay-Tay's beard too, on the other hand, people seem to be 50-50 split on whether they believe this person is actually Tay-Tay's beard. They certainly share a lot of the same theories and views about Kaler. And according to Tay-Tay's beard too, Tay-Tay's beard was taken down due to a copyright issue. And this was her new official account. But Spade's Riddles, who we're again fairly sure is also Tay-Tay's beard said that any blog pretending to be TTB was fake and not associated with the original Tay-Tay's beard. So it is possible that Tay-Tay's beard too was just a troll trying to make the original Tay-Tay's beard look bad. Although let's be real, TTB did plenty of that on her own. It's also possible that Spades Riddles lied about that because supposedly this post from Spades Riddles 
only came out after an extensive post denouncing all of the awful things that TTB2 and TTB3 had been saying uh, had come out. And oh boy, Tay Tay's Beard 2 definitely said some stuff. First off, she doubled down on that classic anti-Semitism. I mean, if it ain't broke, why fix it? She also continued the claim that Mike and Josh were gay and everybody knows this. But there are two instances that make me think that TTB2 is actually a troll. There's this DM where Tay Tay's Beard 2 says, does the LGBTQ flavor of my blog bother you. As you remember, TTB is famously a straight woman. This flavor comment is a ripoff from a public argument that TTB2 got into with a queer woman discussing Tay-Tay's beard, Tay beard and Tay-Tay beard's, ugh, I can't say that fast, TTB1 and TTB2's homophobia. Swifty Sleuth says, before I'm done though, is the LGBTQ flavor of me too much for you. TTB2 gloriously responds, I have no knowledge of your flavor because I do not follow your blog. Does my blog's flavor bother you? Not sure why that sentence bothers you, but please keep me off your blog. If you have an ounce of decency, you will, po you will delete all of your posts bashing me. My team at work that I have assembled is over 65% black and 85% minorities. I am far from racist and you have found nothing to defend that accusation. This DM and <laughs> these responses that TTB2 has with this blogger are like so ghoulish, like so ridiculous that it makes me like hope that this is a troll and this is a joke, but it really is hard to tell. So long story short, Tay Tay's beard, the original account, never gets the official account back, but Tumblr users have said that evermore TTB is actually her new official account. And regardless, Spades Riddles had remained active all throughout that time and continued on after 2020. And actually in another plot twist, it seems as though in 2021, Spade retired. And so now the Kaler insider giving hot tea is I believed a person called Tea Time. I've seen posts on Spade's riddles, both with this like flag emoji and the tea emoji. Could not tell you if that's a separate insider or not because um, let's be real, they're all probably also TTV. But after all of this time, after years, does Tay Tay's beard still really think that Carly and Taylor are together? Yes. Tay Tay's beard in particular is very much emblematic of a pattern of behavior that comes from any kind of conspiratorial thinking. Oftentimes when people grow deeply attached to a conspiracy, especially one with a set time frame, either for the world to end or for a great awakening to occur. When those events don't come to pass, the world doesn't end, everything continues as normal. It actually often pushes people deeper into that conspiracy theory and makes them much more defensive and willing to believe more outlandish things to support that conspiracy. And you would think it would be the opposite, right? If the world was supposed to end and it didn't, you would just go, hey, this thing you predicted was wrong and maybe I made a mistake. But in actuality, we as people don't really like to admit when we might've made a mistake. This kind of pushback and doubt can make people feel even more isolated and desperate to cling on to those beliefs. Now, TTB and say, extreme conspiracy theories are not a one-to-one -one comparison. The belief that Taylor and Carly are secretly together doesn't implicate the United States democracy. But as we've seen the desire to hold on to this belief that Taylor and Carly are still together, over time makes a person much more willing to perpetuate harmful stereotypes if it's something that will fit with their central narrative. There's no scenario where the anti-Semitism, the homophobia, the racism, the outing, any of it was justified. But at least on like a sociological framework, I at least understand how we got here. So if you think that Taylor Swift is queer, if you think she's gay, I'm not here to take that away from you. All I'll say is don't let that belief get in the way of treating other people with decency. And you know what? There are plenty of other queer artists, actually out queer artists, who deserve to be celebrated. But we made it, folks. I did not think it was possible. Uh, now, I do have one bonus post that is not from Tay Tay's Beard or any other TTB run account, but it was so good that I could not leave it out. Okay, here we go. The final Kaler prediction, the Kaler prediction to rule them all. I recall late November holding my breath. You hold your breath on an inhale while you wait for the person to respond. If they respond how you want, yes, you can finally exhale. It's that sigh of relief. Exhale, the best is yet to come, was sent on January 6th, 2020. 
January 6th is also known as Epiphany, the holiday that is 13 days after Christmas. Epiphany is also the 13th track on folklore. Maybe January 6th, 2021 is an important day. Could tie into the Yule Log imagery too. Do you really want to know where I was January 6th? Okay, I did actually film an outro on that day, but because I was like so zoomed in, you can see my outro peace sign, so I had to do it again. Uh, thank you for watching this video and thank you for 50,000 subscribers. I feel like if y'all were a stampede, you could kill me very easily. Um, so that's exciting. Thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. And if you liked this one, uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. See the peace signs?